we have previously defined mu as the population mean. In other words, if I took all the values in the entire population, somehow if I obtained those, added them all up and divided by the population size, divided by how many values there were, that would be called mu. We use a different notation, y bar, for the sample mean. Or if the variable we're talking about is called x, we might call this x bar. But this bar on top refers to the mean of the values in a sample. So for example, if I'm thinking of all women in the US, the population mean is conceptually the average of the heights of all women in the US if I could actually obtain those heights. The sample mean refers to the average of the heights of a small sample of women that I might collect. If I have 100 women who I'm using to determine, to estimate the average height of women in the US, the sample mean, y bar, is the average of those 100 women's heights. In other words, y bar is equal to y1 plus y2 plus all the values in my sample all the way up to yn, which is the height of the nth woman, divided by n, and this lowercase n refers to the sample size. That's in contrast to mu, where we had to add up all the values in the entire population and divide by capital N, which is the population size as opposed to the sample size. I now want to demonstrate using the notation that we're using that the mean of the sample mean is equal to the mean in the population. So what we're doing is taking the expected value, the mean, of y bar. And that's the same as saying we're taking the expected value of 1 over n times the sum of all of our data points. The expected value of some number times the quantity we're interested in is equal to 1 over n times the expected value of the quantity we're interested in. In other words, if I multiply every woman's height by 3 and take the mean of those, it'll be equal to 3 times 65. Same thing here, except instead of 3, I have 1 over n. So the mean of some number times the quantity I'm interested in is equal to that number times the mean of the quantity that I'm interested in. And this is the same as 1 over n times the expected value of y1 plus y2 plus blah, 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 plus all the way up to y n, and we know that the expected value of this sum is the same as the sum of the expected values. And that turns out to be true even if these values here, even if these heights, for example, are not sampled independently. This will always be true, that the mean of a bunch of things added together is the same as the sum of their means. In other words, if I'm interested in the expected value that I'd get if I randomly sample a man and write down his height, and randomly sample a woman and write down her height, and I'm interested in the expected value that I'd see if I did that, the quantity I'd get is the same as the mean height for men plus the mean height for women. That's what this says. OK, and we know that the expected value of any particular data point is equal to mu. So what we have here is 1 over n times mu plus mu plus mu plus mu plus mu. In other words, 1 over n times n times mu, which is equal to mu. So what we've demonstrated here is that the expected value of the sample mean is equal to the population mean.